I have a kitchen that I'm uh, in the process of painting. Um, and these walls have been re-skimmed and where these sockets have been cut out because when the kitchen was fitted they've um, situated new sockets around so these have been cut out into hard wall and when they've re-skimmed it's left a lot of gaps which I need to sort out on this one I've already backed it off and you can see that this is possibly the worst one the other one still has got a bit on it so all I've done is backed it off I've cleaned the socket off the electrics off but never trust it always just stay away from those wires and I need to get this filled and a first coat on this today also I have a hairline crack very fine running up here where again this has been re-skimmed over the old plaster so any cracks in the plaster will always come back through it's probably a little bit of loose a bit aggled on this side but anyway we'll sort that out so i'm not going to use a drill on these all i'm going to do is with my screwdriver which will be the same circumference as my nozzle is just create a hole taking it back to the block and then I can pop some foam in so just a series of holes along this crack going to remove any dust out of here To water and diluted PVA. With this foam shook up and just put a little bit in. What this will do is it'll take away the movement and stop this from cracking out again. a small amount as it expands it will form a plug and with this one I'm going to do something a little bit different because remember electrics don't want too much water so I'm not going to spray any water just want to be able to wet inside the but I'm only going to use a damp brush making sure I always shake any excess off before I put the brush inside and that's it And again, you don't want to be using a lot because you'll have more to remove. So it's just a little bit of a squeeze and just let the foam expand. And all this will do is give a backing to the filler that I'm going to use.
and some may use cork leave the socket on the wall and cork over the top but that's no good if, you, if this ever gets papered it's not right so leave that to cure and then we'll get some filler on it I'll just give you a little look at the what I've done so you can see there's only a small amount gone in there because these backing plates have a series of holes inside and if you fill too much it'll start to come through I've left this about an hour now and that's dry enough for me to cut back Making sure there's enough room for me filler that I'm mixing. About five mil, four or five mil. Now, when you come to these, make sure there's no wires in the way. And carefully. blade now again there's no wires where I'm cutting always make sure okay, that's enough there so that's the filler mixed up. See the consistency. Now, what I need to do is add some of the emulsion paint that I'm using. All this will do is stop the emulsion paint from soaking into the filler when I apply my first coat. And then if I need to do any more filling with my second fill, then when I come to put my final coat of emulsion on, I won't need to do any more touching up. Mix this up. So when you're filling, make sure that you push it in well and just remove any excess off the surface. Doesn't matter if it's not fully filled, you should expect that. Always second fill.
this is ready for sanding down now just a light rub down coating up. So again not letting the bristle of the brush stray too far. Put this in. Literally see how much the bristles going over there. Hardly anything. Always feather the edges. Always starting on a broad area before you start to come and work back into smaller areas. Now this is getting tiled, so I'm not too bothered about going too close to the bottom. that dry one more coat and it's ready so final coat going on now so that's filled two coats of emulsion in less than a day let this dry now and then screw that back.